What's up, everyone? I hope you've had a good year. Thought I'd make this little video to go through some of the cars that may be appearing next year. We've had a pretty exciting and cool year in 2022. Obviously, a lot of new cars, a lot of electric cars, and that's going to be the case in 2023. But I thought, you know, to celebrate the end of this year, why not just do a little video, go through some spy shot uh, things that I've seen. I have my screen in front of me, and I'm literally doing this research as I'm making this video. So there's so many cars I'm going to leave out, but let's get right into it. First things first, I just wanted to say if, how cool this year's been in terms of the cars that we've had we've been super lucky to have some really exciting cars so just go over kind of a few of those a few of my favorites m3 touring came out this year ferrari pura sangue the urus performante seems like the sporty suvs were a real theme this year i mean have been actually for a while but it's coming to a whole new level of extremes with ferrari being out a, a v12 suv and lamborghini you know responding with a more hardcore version of their you know Eurus, which is starting to have a few years under its belt as well. What else? Another theme that's been, and I don't think anyone would have seen this one coming a few years ago, off-road supercars. There's been the Hurricane Serato. Let me check if I've said that right. Stirato. Sorry, I keep getting that wrong. Stirato. My bad. And the 911 Dakar. So, yeah, I don't know where this... Dakar off-road supercar thing has, has really come from. I don't know if any of them are actually going to be used in the way that they could or arguably should, but, you know, is what it is. I think they look really cool. I think it's an awesome kind of engineering exercise. And uh, the fact that they've gone and, and followed through with the development is cool. And uh, and it's, you know, the proof that Lamborghini making the Urus and uh, Porsche making, you know, Cayennes and Macans allows them to have the funding to then do these really cool projects that no one really saw coming. So I'm all for it. I think, you know, the more the merrier in terms of these projects. And if, you know, the 4x4 and SUV things that some people are, are really against allow the door for these cool things to be open, then yes. Electric cars, obviously, as I said, big theme in 22. But the first time I've actually really seen a, an electric car and gotten properly excited, apart from maybe some of the things that Tesla announces, which then you're never quite sure if it's actually going to happen or not, but is the Rolls-Royce Spectre. Because I see it as the first car that really just makes 100% sense and makes it more desirable in electric than it would with a naturally um, aspirated or a petrol engine, basically. Because Rolls-Royce is all about how quiet, how smooth is the experience, and nothing's more quiet or smooth than the, an electric driving experience. So I think they nailed it with the Spectre in terms of getting the traditional Rolls-Royce-ness <laughs> in there without ruining that but including the new technology, so that's really cool. BMW XM I, was an exciting one I put in there. Not not my <laughs> biggest cup of tea, but, you know, cool car to have come out. The new Z06, really cool. I was lucky enough to drive a Stingray this year. Was Loved it, so the new Z06 coming out was awesome. The Valhalla, even though it's been around for a while, I guess was officially kind of uh, launched again this year. And last but definitely not least, the new GT2 RS. With DRS, no front boot, and more hardcore than ever. Every RS, I ask myself, how is it going to get any better? Every time it gets better. Those are some of the highlights of 2022. Let's get into what should arrive, hopefully, in 2023. It's going to be a lot of spy shots because I enjoy trying to dig deep and work out theories on what a, a car will be and when it will arrive and all this stuff. So there's all the cars that have obviously been announced and there's so many that I'm not going to be able to say. So, you know, I've chosen a couple out here. So I'm sure there'll be loads of comments with, you know, you missed this car out and that car out. Please, by all means, do put them in there because it does interest me learn about new cars that I have left out. But I've just chosen a few that I came across and it's uh, yeah a selection of many that will arrive in 23. I've also chosen to stay in the like supercar sports car segment which doesn't mean there are other cars that are coming along that aren't interesting it's just you know this is kind of what we all want to see we all want to dream we all want to look at these kinds of cars and uh, yeah it's just what, it's what's exciting isn't it so first things first Aroma, a new Ferrari Roma. Roma's been around for a little while now. It's the, you know, really classy looking Ferrari, Aston Martin-ish kind of looking thing. But a new one being tested with all of its kind of classic livery. It's going to be a convertible version, which is rumored to be called the Roma Spider, which is incredibly creative of the Ferrari team. Now, what's interesting here is, does this mean it's going to be the end of the Portofino? Because for not a particular, that huge of a difference in price, uh, when you look at the overall cost of these things, there is already a... 2 plus 2 convertible, hardtop convertible car 
using effectively the same engine, you know, 612 horsepower, 561 uh, foot-pounds of torque. So does this mean that the Portofino is gone after this? Will this replace the Portofino? Because, you know, the Portofino had that edge of having the convertible over the, the Roma and the 2 plus 2, but I think this will be the end of it now. It's been around since 2017. Now the Portofino, the recent one, the Portofino M, kind of just been tweaked. But with this new Roma Spider coming out, I think that's going to be Chow Chow Portofino Bonjour or, or, or what is it? Buongiorno, Roma Spider. Here's another one, which is exciting, which I think will be sat in like a similar kind of category to the Roma Spider, is the new AMG GT. So, I mean, we have all know the, the AMG GT. It's been around for a while. There's been so many variants. GT, GTC, GTS, GTR, GT, Black Series, GT, AMR. No, not AMR. That's the wrong one. GTR Pro. There you go. That's the one. Yeah, there's been like a million different versions of it. But actually, the base has now been around for a while. The... It, it, originally kind of replaced they never said it replaced the sls but it, even though you know it came it sat a bit below it but uh, effectively it did replace the sls and uh, now there's going to be a new coupe version of this i say coupe because that's quite important again i think they're playing with the convertibleness and playing with models and it gets a little confusing so basically the mg gt was coupe and convertible right you could have it in both. Then, last year, um, or this year, the SL came out, the new SL. And they stopped making the AMG GT convertibles because the SL kind of fit that bill, right? The 63 AMG as the, as, as the V8, uh, 577 horsepower. It's a convertible. It's actually a 2 plus 2, so you're actually gaining in that side. But now, the AMG GT coupe version never got an update, right? So the convertible arguably became the SL, so it got an update, but the coupe never did. So now there's been spotted testing a new coupe version of the AMG GT, which I guess will sit alongside the SL, will probably have a derivative of the same engine, so minimum, I think, starting with the 577 horsepower and, and all that stuff, and there will probably be various different versions of that coming down the line as well. But uh, yeah, it all gets a little bit confusing, but from my understanding, at least for now, there's going to be the SL will take the convertible slot and the GT will be coupe only at first. We're going to stick with Mercedes for the CLE 63 AMG S. I hope this doesn't get too... I'm confusing myself by saying all this and reading these things, but basically this is a, like a new coupe which is combining the C-Class coupe and the E-Class coupe in, in one car. So while SUVs are killing it and doing really well, coupes four-door coupes like this aren't doing as well. So I think Mercedes has chosen to rather than redevelop two different models, Combine it as in one, call it the CLE, and it's going to be hybrid. It's going to have 671 horsepower. 671 in a car which is basically supposed to be replacing the C-Class C63 coupe. It will probably have the same engine as the new C63 wagon. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to be nuts. I mean, hybrid, maybe not the most shouty, characterful engine in the world, but it's going to be very quick, and uh, it's going to look a lot cooler than... Uh, the wagon actually well saying that I, I really like the wagon and I'm sure there's a lot of people that are team station wagon in here as am I so that's coming that would be, that would be pretty cool it looks from the spy photos I mean it just looks exactly as you'd expect it it's, it's a C63 coupe basically yeah as predicted a lot of hybridization or electrification of cars one car which was announced by the CEO of Porsche is the full EV Boxster so Oliver Bloom CEO of Porsche announced that there would be a full electric version of the of the 718 Boxster. Will it still be called 718? I'm not sure, but anyways, you get the idea. But that will be arriving, maybe it's cheating a bit putting it in this video, because I think there'll be more 24 or 25, something like that. Anyways, I mean, it will probably be very powerful, have crazy acceleration and stuff, but you know, the one I'm more interested in is this one, which was spotted on the Nürburgring not too long ago, the Boxster RS. This is sick. Basically, it's going to be a convertible version of the GT4 RS. A few small differences, so it isn't literally that, but, you know, it, it, if you read between the lines, that's effectively what I think it, it should be. Uh, it seems to have the same rims, the same air intakes, the same aerodynamic details as a, as a 4 RS. It will have the same six-cylinder, four-liter engine as the GT3 and the GT4 RS. So, yeah, this will be an absolute beast. Does it still have, yeah, it still has the, um, the induction kind of in intake things behind your ears. But, you know what, this actually may be the first time that this it sounds better in the coupe non-convertible version. Because if you think about it, you know, it's got those intakes right behind your ears. 
ear. So you get that like crazy noise and the whole cabin is just so loud. Apparently, I've never experienced it, but all the videos I've seen, Harry's Garage did an amazing video where he, uh, you know, like measured how loud it was. And it was like over 110 decibels, I think, in the car at 9,000 RPM. So sounds insane because you're kind of in this cocoon of noise, right? When you hear the, the clips from outside, it sounds really nice, but not quite as impressive. Because the Boxster won't have that, will it actually be almost more exciting to be in the, in the, in the coupe? Whereas usually it's the opposite. That's one of the appeals of getting the convertible is you can hear the car more. But actually this time it will be the opposite way around. I don't know. Regardless of that, there'll be a huge waiting list for them. They'll all sell out very quickly and they'll be fantastic to drive. Will they do a manual? I doubt it because it seems like with all the RSs, it's always double clutch PDK. Maybe. Maybe that will be a surprise to add the drama. I don't know. But that would be awesome if it was. But uh, I, I kind of doubt it. Um, seems like, you know, you can see in the spy shots, it's also got the Vysac and, and all these packages. But cool, that's a naturally aspirated car that's arriving. No electrification there. However, one car which is arriving, finally, that will have naturally aspirated V12 and a hybrid um, system as well is the replacement Aventador. So I don't know if they've actually released a name yet. I can't see one in, in the website I've got in front of me. But yeah, the replacement Aventador, which has been arriving, it feels like it's been around the corner for the last like five years. The Aventador came out, I think, in 2011. So yeah, it will be 12 years old this upcoming year. So it's about time, I guess. But this is the way I think it's always been with um, V12 mid-engine Lamborghinis is the lifeline is really long. So it's it's unsurprising, but the fact that the last mo Aventador model that came out was called the Ultimate, which means the Ultimate, the last, is, I think, a massive hint. And then, you know, the Cyan and the Centenario have been coming out, teasing new technology, teasing new design language, and bit by bit, you know, that um, I think is, is kind of paving the way for what will be the Aventador replacement, which they have said will have a naturally aspirated V12, will have a form of hybridization, will that be... Just a little, you know, like little hybrid thing in the back, kind of just to help give a little push along. Or will it actually be able to, you know, do a few miles fully electric? I don't know. It looks as dramatic as any V12 Lamborghini would look. It looks like it's got the front is really inspired by the CN. The back is completely kind of different and new with those exhausts uh, up top. But yeah, this will be an absolute beast. And again, I'm sure it is sold out already no doubt about it <laughs> yeah what an animal that's gonna be however i don't think it's gonna have a particularly easy first half of its life because i think ferrari are kind of gunning up and getting ready for the new lamborghini so there's been uh, spied a versione speciale of the sf90 stradale so versione speciale <laughs> it's hard to say without doing a mock accent is what ferrari call all their cars their special lightweight hardcore cars before they go out so example the 812 was called the sorry the 812 competizione before it was called had the code name 812 versione speciale so now this sf90 is codenamed versione speciale and it will probably be called something uh, something else like the SF90 Fiorano or something, I don't know. And it will be an absolute beast. Now, I was lucky enough to drive an SF90 Stradale. Um, I spoke to, uh, to Shmi, who has one. And uh, I think everyone who's driven one of these could agree that the last thing this car needs is more power. It could do with less weight, that fair, but more power, definitely not. However, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. It's going to have more power and it's going to have less weight. And I think it's purely going to be an answer in the, in the, to the Lamborghini. So will they wait for the Lamborghini to come out to then kind of steal the limelight a month later with this thing, which will come and just, you know, have insane numbers, maybe. But uh, it's definitely going to be a battle between those two, which is going to be uh, really cool to, to watch. And I think they're also, you know, using probably a lot of things that they're learning because they're developing at the same time. There's been spy shots of a like a race version of the SF90. This is track only race car, um, which will be coming out. So yeah, I think they're developing probably those two cars at the same time, the track only version and the, the uh, Versione Speciale. And then they will kind of auto complement themselves. One won't be street legal and one will just be uh, somehow an absolute animal, which will be street legal. But um, yeah, that's really exciting. I think we're going to be in for a pretty cool duel between the Ferrari and the Lamborghini there. Back to Porsche, back to EV, the Macan EV, that's coming out. 
maybe less supercar y than the others, but I think it's a hugely important car and will allow us to, as I said at the beginning, have projects like the 911 Dakar and things like that popping up. You know, it will probably have decent performance numbers. It will have good range because, um, yeah, Porsche always, if they do something, they do it properly, which is what everyone kind of loves about Porsche. It will still have, you know, a lot of the things that people buy a Porsche for. So, you know, the customer service, the quality of everything that you touch, the awesome development, the way that it will drive, the feel that you'll have around it. Yes, it won't have the noise. Yes, it won't have the performance. Yes, it won't be quite maybe as visceral. But is that really why most people are buying a McCann? No. In a lot of countries where you're getting these eco taxes, which are crazy, having a fully electric McCann makes complete sense. It will probably be one of their highest selling models. So hugely important car and, you know, big step in Porsche taking the direction in terms of full electrification. So you can see, you know, they're definitely heading that way with the, the you know, the Taycan, then now this, then the, the Boxster. So yeah, pretty nuts to see, to see how quickly things are moving, especially at Porsche, but this is going to be a hugely important car for them, and I'm, I'm excited to, to see one. It seems like they've changed quite a lot, actually. The front looks different, the headlights look different, but, you know, maybe they're just trying to add something special so that it's got a little bit of a pizzazz when it comes out and doesn't just look like every other McCann. Anyways, excited to see that one. Still with Porsche and still with electrics. Looks like they've been testing a Tesla played beating Taycan. So there's this like funky Taycan going around with a wing being driven by the test driver that uh, set the lap record in the Taycan Turbo S, 733.35, it's written right there. I haven't just remembered that. I do have it written on the screen right in front of me. But uh, yeah, which is actually the record for an EV of this type, two seconds faster than the Model S played. But yeah, they're testing something else now. It's the same guy driving. So that's why it's, you know, you would think that it's Porsche. Yeah, I think they will just be trying to push it even further. It's probably like halfway through, probably halfway through the life of the Taycan model. It's been around for, I think, since 2019. Was it 2019? Something like that. And uh, so, yeah, so probably there to kind of, you know, bring a little bit of an update to the Taycan, more range, more power, things like that. Uh, that should be arriving, which is, which is going to be awesome. Same-ish platform, similar-ish platform uh, will be the A6 e-tron. So the first member of the A6 family to be fully electric. So there will probably be, you know, down the line A5, A4, all this stuff. But uh, yeah, similar probably to the to the Taycan in terms of uh, range and, and things like that. Um, it'll have a decent amount of power. It looks really cool. There were concept photos, which looked awesome. And if you look at the spy shots, it actually looks like the, at least the overall line is gonna be very similar to the concept photos. So yeah, no, should be really good. I'm sure we'll have, you know, five, 600 horsepower. Um, they seem to be predicting and, you know, really good range and really fast charging. So five to 80% in less than 25 minutes uh, is what they'd announced on the concept car. So that would be awesome. And then let's finish off with the Maserati Gran Turismo convertible. So the Gran Turismo was announced and it's, you know, it's going to have an electric version, a version which is going to have the V6 from the um, Maserati MC20. And now there's a convertible version coming out. So it, from the spy shots, it's literally just exactly what you'd expect it to be. I mean, it looks, it will look fantastic. What will this be like to drive? I'm not sure. I think it, it, like there was a side of it which was maybe a little underwhelming on how it was received because the Gran Turismo was such like a legend for the way it looked and the way it sounded that it was maybe a bit anticlimactic to see that there would be a full electric version, but it makes sense and it's still a very classy looking car. And as a convertible, you know, as a Riviera Cruiser, that will be an awesome car that will come out in 2023. Whoa, I'm now seeing that there, yeah, just how much, basically everything in here, apart from the Roma and the Boxster is going electric. Anyway, there's lots of other exciting cars that will be coming out and all these things. And there's always the surprises, some a couple hyper cars that may be popping out of nowhere. You never know. But uh, yeah, definitely a lot of electric stuff going on. But yeah, it's been an awesome year for us car lovers. I'm sure it'll be another fantastic one next year, seeing how this electric technology kind of marries itself to us just trying to live out our childhood dreams and passions, right, through these cars. So um, no, awesome. I hope you guys have all had a really good year. Yeah, thank you so much for the messages. I've just started posting again a little bit more, and I really appreciate uh, those of you who are still standing by even though i've had these long periods of not posting so 
I do really appreciate it. And uh, I hope you and your families have an amazing 2023. Uh, you know, all the best to, to everyone out there. So lots of love from me to you guys. And I'll see you again very soon. Have a good year. Happy New Year, everyone. Bye-bye.